Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today, we are going to be looking at the top 10 highest win rate decks in Historic Brawl currently, uh, based on data tracked from Untapped GG, which is a companion tool. So this will account for people who are using the tool. So if people are playing on mobile, stuff like that, it won't be counted in the population. But the intent here is to kind of give you a breakdown of terms of what decks and kind of ideas, commanders are performing well, and give you kind of a shell if you want to build that. The thing is with the Historic Brawl, it's a fun first format. People do take it a little bit more competitive in some uh, avenues. So you might get into the hell queue of like Nadu and stuff. Uh, but if you're missing cards, you can always swap in uh, and kind of build it to your own customization. Like right now, my two favorite decks are Koth, the Planeswalker, the mono red, like uh, make all your mountains deal four damage, as well as Yogmoth which don't feature in here. Those are the decks I play the most out of Historic Brawl. So even if you do have a pet deck, stuff like that, there's cards you can add in, but you can kind of see with that. Um, we, I usually do these about once a month, once every two months, whereas with the regular metagame breakdown, we'll do weekly updates for the constructed 60 card formats. Um, so we're going to jump in. Uh, in terms of popularity, Brawl's pretty open. You're not going to see stuff like um, Standard, where Mono Red Ley Line's like 30% of the meta. A lot of the decks you'll see here are like 1% to 2%. Uh, you'll usually see kind of an uptick in new commanders as they kind of come out. So things like Arabella, uh, Marina Vendrell, the Jolly Balloon Men are all new kind of commanders that people are trying out. Um, but we will jump in. So for the, the last two, three weeks, we've had 450,000 games that are assessed. The highest win rate deck. And one thing I'll note, I excluded like these kind of silly one trick pony like crucius play one card type thing the lelia decks those are fun like once or twice i think and then kind of defeats the purpose um so omnath locus of the royal the highest win rate uh, it's at 82 percent obviously things to factor into here people might be conceding early to these uh depends on the commander as well if you're in like the hell queue or not um, but we'll kind of go over at a high level. We're not going to do card by card, but kind of explain what the concept of these decks are, kind of how they're playing. So Omnath, Locus of Royal, 4 mana, 3-3, three, three, enters battlefield, deals damage to any target equal to the number of elementals you control. And then when a land enters the battlefield, you put a counter on an elemental you control. Then if you have eight or more lands, you draw a card. So this is kind of a teamer, uh, ramp, control-ish style deck. So you have a bunch of cards that care about either getting ahead on mana or like ramp you. Uh, things like Tyros Provisioner can help you get a bunch of treasures, stuff like that. You have things like Lumra, Primeval Titan, uh, Ashaya turns all your creatures into land, Mythweaver Pog gets you extra lands, Scape Shift can kind of be used as like a combo piece to draw you a bunch of cards, put a bunch of counters on things. You pair it with things like Lotus Cobra that generates you extra mana, Azusa lets you play extra lands, Nissa gives you mana, helps you find elementals. So it's kind of all in that synergy-based approach. Just a ton of ramp effects, glimpse the core, growth spiral into the north, leafkin druid, uh, emerald medallion gets you cost reduction, awaken the woods gives you a whole bunch of lands. So it's all kind of in that concept. And then your big payoffs, you know, you take some extra turns, Alrins, Karns, Time Warp all play into that. Chandra can double up on your extra turn spells. Uh, and then you have like walk-in closet that lets you replay lines from your graveyard as well. Uh, so that's kind of the locus of the Royal Elemental deck. Uh, from one ramp deck to another, we have Mono Green. So this is Mono Green Nissa, 82%. Uh, so this is around Nissa Ascendant Animus. So this commander could cost anywhere between 5 to 7 mana if you do want to pay the Phyrexian mana cost in it. Uh, just... Plus one, make progressively bigger tokens. Really flexible, comes in, destroys artifacts or enchantments, and then it's an overrun ability for its last mode. So similar to the Omnath deck, there's a lot of ways to kind of get ahead on mana in this deck. Uh, you do have things like Thorn Vault Forager, like the Utopia Sprawl is a lot easier in this deck to play, given you have a high number of forests. Just a ton of mana dorks in here. Um, things that kind of care about you putting lands into play. Scoot Swarm, then you go Overrun is a really powerful kind of combination. We see some new cards in like Overlord here. Nissa doubles up your mana, a little bit more stompy focused. And then you have your big kind of, if you want to play like your Timmy deck, like 
early ramp into big threats on the top end. Emrakul's, you have Ulamog's, Crater Hoof Behemoth, Tooth and Nail gets you like whatever big threats you want. Titan of Industry, Hornet Queen, Prime Time, all kind of mixed into here as well. Nykthos kind of goes wild with all these green pips in the mana cost. Go then to Ral Crackling Wit, 71% win rate for this one. So this is built around the Planeswalker Ral Crackling Wit, 4 mana 4. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you put a loyalty counter. So this can get loyalty without you actually committing. Uh, plus 1, you get some Prowess Otters. Minus 3, draw 3, discard 2. And then it's ultimate, draw 3 cards. You get an emblem with instants and sorceries you control have Storm, which is very powerful. So this is kind of an Is It Spells Matters deck. Uh, probably a little bit more inclined to the is it control route so you do have things like just a bunch of cheap interaction card draw wizards class gets you some value in terms of drawing cards and putting counters you have like delver in here so a bunch of like counters removal some cheap threats and ragavan uh storm chasers talent gives you more otters a bunch of ways to just draw cards bounce protect your stuff ral kind of goes off here too um, and then you have Itch Itchic Moon Gauntlet that can help you proliferate. So you'll have some like proliferate style effects that also work in that regard. Tezzerit Scambit proliferates as well. So kind of core of the deck is trying to ultimate Ral, and then you just go wild in terms of playing stuff. Uh, one card you might like want in this deck is like Snapcaster Mage. Seems like a good addition here. Just flash you back some stuff. Mizzix Mastery is another card that you might want to consider just flashback everything from your graveyard you can even build the deck in a way that you can like have blood moon as a an option here so just play it as like a blue moon deck uh, and kind of go from there you have a number of basics so it's pretty easy to kind of lock your opponent out that way and then just plus the ral itali primal conquer so a brawl deck was introduced recently uh, that you can purchase but this gives you an idea if you want to upgrade so itali is basically the concept of it is a bunch of ramp, play your Atali, free cast like a spell from your deck or your opponents, and then either have it die and just redo it again. A lot of times Atali's cast basically pays the tax to recast it again if they kill it. And then you can transform it and it just becomes indestructible poison threat. So just tons of ramp in the deck. Every like one and two mana kind of option. You have Cavaretti Revels that helps you cascade, bunch of three mana effects, things like Domri's uh really good, just allowing you to ramp and be uncounterable but like even pretty much all your threats just generate more mana to get it out over and over again and then you just free cast again a bunch of big stuff here your portals your eldrazi's the card that always gets me in this deck is verdant rejuvenation just huge value here seek x creatures enchantments planeswalkers with where x is the highest mana value uh, so usually get like seven threats in play and it just kind of beats you up that way there which is kind of sweet. <laughs> Moving on, we go to a Johnny Nakato Pariah. One of the strongest cards in Timeless and Historic. We have the powerful Planeswalker, half man, half amazing. A Johnny, so two mana, one, two comes into play. You get a two, one cat. If a cat you control dies, you flip a Johnny. A very strong Planeswalker where you pretty much are just going to be spamming the zero, uh, making cats, pinging damage to your opponent's face or taking out their creatures. This is a Boros aggressively oriented deck. Just a ton of powerful one and two drop threats. Uh, kind of gets you ahead there. So just protection effects, they, like cheap removal in here. Uh, you just want to try to kill your opponent as quick as possible. The Mox Amber is really effective in this deck because you can go like turn to a Johnny and then immediately play another one drop. You have Tajik. So this is another commander I play in like as my Boros commander, but this is another strong one that comes out. You have Fury in here, Hell Rider as a way to do extra ping damage, Adelin, Ambergris refills your hand, just a bunch of powerful three drops, Lelia, Pajik in here, probably Fable the Mirror Breaker. Yeah, so just Boros, aggro, kill them as quick as possible. They're going to be worrying about dealing with your Johnny and not have it flip, and you can just keep pressuring your opponent that way there. The least fun deck in the format to play against, Nadu. Uh, banned in like every other format, but still legal here somehow, despite being banned in Commander. 69% um, win rate. I'm probably contributing to this because I just don't enjoy playing against Nadu, so I usually just concede. Uh, Nadu is a stupid mistake of a card. 
three mana, three, four. Whenever it becomes a target, whenever a creature you control becomes target of spell or ability, you reveal the top card of your li library. You put a land into play and it triggers twice per turn. So basically, even if they kill Nadu, it basically pays for itself. The deck's got just a bunch of cheap creatures, protection effects, kind of it's a Simic tempo oriented deck. You're going to generate a whole bunch of mana and just kind of out tempo your opponent. They're going to be so worried about killing the Nadu. You can usually get ahead and then just take over the game. You have things like Tadiova that draws extra cards. Tireless Tracker can get you some card advantage. You play it with things like Nissa that then generate you extra mana so you can play extra spells. Uh, and then you have things like Bristly Bill where the land comes into play. You can target one of your creatures and then you get some value there. Uh, Bone Saw, like you have, we don't have the zero mana uh, equipments in this format, um, but there's like cheap one mana equipments that you can move around the counters and stuff like that to trigger Nadu's ability. Clockman gets paid, Rusko. 69%. Uh, so once the real boogeyman of the format, Rusko is a self-contained win condition in a demure control deck. 4 mana 3-3 three, three comes into play. You get a copy of Midnight Clock. And then whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you your opponent loses a life, you gain a life. And then you put time counters. So it's basically just refilling your hand constantly, getting you a whole bunch of life and kind of drain through there. The deck itself is basically discard, counter spells, removal all kind of paired into it and just kind of keep recasting you're able to cast oracle the alpha and then shuffle and try to find the effects over and over again taking a whole bunch of extra turns along the way drawing cards and just beating up on your opponent that way there we go professor onyx up next just a shade under 69 so this is a mono black mid-rangey control deck built around uh liliana and cosplay Six mana, five loyalty, magecraft, so uh, the kind of theme of that set. Whenever you cast instant sorcery, opponent loses two life, you gain two life. So another planeswalker, that can be its win condition on its own. Uh, draining um, plus gets you some card advantage. Minus three, forces sacrifice. Minus eight, um, just kind of a pretty big impacted win condition in itself, but you could just kind of drain your opponent out. Next, got a bunch of hand hate, removal options. Uh, just things like Jet Medallion lowers the cost. You can play Necro in this deck, which is a crazy card. Just punch card advantage. Brexing Arena. You might even want to look at some of the new rooms. There's the new kind of Phyrexian Arena room that makes a demon in there. That's pretty sweet that you can look at. Gives you some card advantage and a win condition on its own. Planeswalker effects. Vraska helps you get Lily Ultimate faster. Invoke Despair in here. Siege lets you kind of toolbox for various removal options that all kind of play into that effect. We have nerfed one ring, but one ring is still pretty strong, all things to get considered. But playing kind of control esque the deck, and then you have a bunch of utility lands as well. Satya Aetherflux Genius, 65% for a Jeskai kind of aggro ish shell. So Satya is a Four mana, three five, menace haste. Uh, so this is an energy kind of sub themed deck. Whenever it attacks, you create a tapped and attacking token. That's a copy of one other target non token creature. So what you really want in this deck is a lot of enter the battlefield style effects since you can copy them. And then you get two energy at the beginning of your next end step. You either sacrifice the creature unless you pay energy equal to its casting cost. So you have a bunch of things like we do have some of the nerfed energy effects. Galvanic, Guide of Souls is a big engine in the deck. But you have things like, for example, Thalia's Lieutenant puts counters. You can blink it, get some more counters on it. Uh, Obscura Polymorphous can exile stuff. Deshana can kind of reset. Skyclave Apparition exile stuff. Uh, Sanguine Evangelist makes you a bunch of tokens. Reflector Mage bounces a bunch of stuff. Recruiter of the Guard can tutor a bunch of stuff. Uh, and then so you're just playing kind of like tempo-oriented creatures, strong effects. Uh, Solitude Fury can be bounced. Elish Norn doubles the Enter the Battlefield effects. Sun Titan rebuys you a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you make tokens, you can double those tokens with Mondrak. Uh, so kind of tempo-oriented, aggressive deck in Jeskai. Usually a color that's devoted more to control, so kind of cool to see a more creature-focused deck. And then lastly, Grenzero Crooked Jailer. So another one of the boogeymen of the format for some time. Grenzo with the heist mechanic. Six mana, six four, beginning of your upkeep. Uh, so when it enters the battlefield and beginning of your upkeep, you heist your opponent's library. You look at three non-land cards. You get to cast one for free each turn. 
Uh, so this kind of lets you play your opponent's deck. A lot of the decks got some early ramp to help you get into Grenzo, and then it's kind of a Rakdos mid rangey control deck. So you're playing your opponent's stuff, but you have just powerful effects again, like Harvester Misery, you have some Planeswalker packages with like Chandra, Prosper is another card advantage engine, you're casting stuff from Exile, so you get the treasure tokens that way there. Uh, just Rakdos, good stuff. Lelia in here, Laughing Jasper Flint gets you free cast, just a bunch of threats like Crucius, Fable, like your opponent's got to kill these things and then you eventually get to uh, your top end with Grenzo and then he just kind of steamrolls your opponent that way there. Otherwise it's just removal options and then discard kind of effects mixed into there as well. So those are your top 10 decks of the week. Let me know in the comments what deck you most enjoy playing in the Historic Brawl format and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.